good. Yes. If there's one thing you can say for sure about this year, it's that it's almost over. And like a dad stuffing his station wagon for a family picnic that no one wants to go to, Donald Trump packed a lot into 2017. 2017 is how I look when I put on my leather crop top. Too much flesh, not enough fabric. But love him or hate him, no one has done so much in so little time and driven so many critics nuts. He drives more people crazy than synthetic pot. It's, it's true. So to recap, with tape, first there was foreign policy. A lot happened, and it was good. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. North Korea. Best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. The people that we're going against, they don't wear uniforms. They're sneaky, dirty rats. <laughs> he wins a special unicorn for that. Now, on the domestic front, more of a mixed bag. We are cracking down on the sanctuary cities that shield criminal aliens, finally. We are building a wall on the southern border. The unemployment rate is at a almost 17-year low. The stock market is soaring to record levels. We're not getting the job done. And I'm not going to blame myself, I'll be honest. They are not getting the job done. We've had health care approved, and then you had a surprise vote by John McCain. Mm. <laughs> oh, come on. And when things weren't going well, Trump does what we all do. He went home for a little love. He's been all over television <laughs> saying the best things. And I see him standing. And didn't you get here like at four in the morning? Pizza. Say a couple of words to this. You were there at the start. You've been there every single day since. And I will never forget. Believe me. I'm here this evening to cut through the fake news filter. Is there any place that's more fun, more exciting, and safer than a Trump rally? All right, all right. And as a noted germaphobe, we must credit Trump, he still shook hands a lot. Lots of handshaking. Did you see all the handshaking? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> some people came and some people went. Most people came and went. Newly hired White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci is leaving the job he was given just 10 days ago. President Trump needs help. It's the reason I left the White House. We had a good talk yesterday. Uh, I resigned. He accepted it. I just think it, it was in the best interest uh, of our communications department, of our press organization, uh, to not have too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm, good news is they're all living together <laughs> in a bed and breakfast in Vermont. Yep, Donald Trump packed more into a year than most leaders do in eight. At times, it felt like you were at a rock festival where three bands are playing at once. And yet at the end of the night, only one band is standing and it's Trump. He's the Jethro Tull of politicians, still around, but doing the classics while we're high on synthetic pot. And like I always say, whenever he ticks you off, consider the alternative. Now, having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Can't help themselves. <laughs> now that makes for a happy Thanksgiving. Nice one. He's arrived. <laughs> Like the small intestine, her book is divided into three parts. Could have, should have, would have. She could have said this to Trump, she could have said this to Bernie, or she would have said that to Obama. No, instead she held it in like a one 12-month fart. <laughs> and in the book she finally let it out, and boy does it stink. Now, like every show that's been doing this book, we're going to run some audio excerpts. Well, sort of. 
In the family room, we put up a colorful painting of the balloon drop at the Democratic National Convention. <laughs> Over the fireplace, I hung a vintage suffragette banner that Mark had given me that declared, votes for women. I also finally saw the last season of Downton Abbey. That show always reminds me of the night I spent in Buckingham Palace in 2011 during President Obama's state visit in a room just down the hall from the balcony where the queen waves to the crowds. By Thanksgiving, the work on the house was done. Everything was perfect before our friends and family descended for dinner. My mind wandered back to that incredible day when Bill took the oath of office for the first time. <laughs> you gotta hand it to her. No one has made more money off losing than Hillary. And I include Marie Osmond. Looks good. Yeah, she does. Nutrisystem. <laughs> but now she's got a book and she's making the rounds like a Jehovah's Witness in a pantsuit. <laughs> If only she worked as hard for the presidency, then we wouldn't have this book about how she lost the presidency. What a great example of strong womanhood. She blamed everyone but herself for her loss. Comey, Russia, Supreme Court, Sanders, the RNC, the American voter. She spreads blame like her husband spreads... <laughs> anyway. It's like she's on some weird drug. Have you made thousands of people cry all at once? Are you running out of people to blame for your failures? You've thought about turning on your friends, but don't know how. Well, worry no more. From the makers of Blame It All comes extra strength Blame It All PM. This powerful formula works with the brain's receptors to help you throw everyone under the bus with none of the guilt. Pinning your defeats on those closest to you has never been easier. The Supreme Court, Vice President Joe Biden, FBI Director Jim Comey, the insurgent left-wing candidacy of Bernie Sanders, Bill especially, the last season of Downton Abbey. You'll wake up with the confidence to do a sham of a book tour so you can make money from the seeds of sympathy you planted. Get extra strength Blame It All PM today. Side effects may include broken alliances and fractured parties. The only thing more glaring than her excuses is her sense of entitlement. She actually bought a home next to her house in Chappaqua for the White House staff, she expected, while she vacations. Now imagine that. She didn't, she didn't just pick out the curtains. She picked out the damn house. Now it's just an expensive couch for Bill to sleep on. <laughs> Alone, I think. Now, judging by her book, she's infected by the very bug she helped spread. Victimhood. Pitting Americans against each other, she created an Olympics of grievance. The division, however, didn't add up for her. So now she's the biggest victim of them all. Has this ever happened before? Did anyone who lost the presidency write a book like this? Did Ford or Dukakis or Dole? Well, she said she wanted to be a first. And she is, though not in the way she expected. <laughs> Uh, Joe, um, is this the best way for her to handle her loss? Well, I haven't read the book because no one's offered to hold a gun to my head. <laughs> but it's a nice piece of Hillary Clinton fan fiction written by her number one fan, <laughs> where she talks about her coping methods, and one of them, she said, was she practiced alternate nostril breathing, right. which I think any of us would, we would do the same thing if we were that full of <laughs> um, she also says she's infected with the responsibility gene, clearly recessive in her case, because she blames everyone but herself, and she was the problem. That election was hers to lose. She lost to a candidate that came out of nowhere who's never even been a mayor or a town selectman or a dog catcher, yeah. and America looked at her and said, we'll take anyone else over you, and she can't accept that fact. Mm -hmm. J uh, Jason, what do you think, I mean, this book is selling, people want to read it, but is it like the... Uh, the cliched car accident, people are reading it because it's so sad and I gross. don't know. I mean, the, the whole premise and the conclusion is all right on the cover. Why, why do you even need to open it up? What happened? <laughs> Hillary Clinton happened. Yeah. I mean, that's the... As long as I don't have to call her President Clinton, I'm happy with her selling yeah. as many books as possible. Yeah. Pirates? Yes. Um, is she hurting the party, her party, by not just refusing to stop talking? Should she stop talking, or is this just too entertaining? 
it, well, I, I missed the entertaining part. I, <laughs> is there a pop-up book with some juggling? I mean, it's, it, unfortunately, it's a reflection of our time when it's just in to be a victim. I mean, uh. you can't just lose anymore. Could you imagine Matt Ryan was still uh, crying about losing the Super Bowl? I mean, he lost the damn Super Bowl. She wasn't even in it in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, some of the other guys who ran, like George Bush Sr., like, I mean, Hashtag Ross Perot ruined my life. You know? <laughs> John McCain, Sarah Palin. What happened? You know, yeah, yeah. Al Gore's book, Bill yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> it's just we live. We it's a victim. We're it's a. I won't be a part of this. You yeah. lost. Move yeah. on. Yeah. This is unheard of. You yeah. know, like she's still crying. That's it. Trump should do a quick publish of a book that just says you lost. Move on. And it's just <laughs> nothing in there. That would be funny. No, like page one, seriously, move on. Yeah. Page two, why are you still flipping pages? Move on. <laughs> page three, OMG, this is a joke. I can't believe you still haven't moved on. Yeah. And to be a, yeah. That's a really good idea. Somebody, Kat, is going to steal that idea watching this show, and we're not going to make any money off it. Probably. But yes. to, be, to be a victim and to be a successful victim, you have to be relatable. And I was watching that Anderson Cooper interview. Yes. She's the least relatable person to the point where I can't even believe she's human. Yeah. She said she felt during her public life like she was on a high wire without a net. She like the DNC rigged the primary in your favor. How is that not a net? Like yes. when I think of the times of my life when I didn't have a net, I was like a Boston market cashier and sleeping on people's couches. Like yeah. that's not a net. No. You have a throne that people were carrying you around on and you still mess it up. And she also said, I am a huge fan of Lay Miz, who isn't? <laughs> Literally all other people. <laughs> no other people are huge. We like beer and reality and TV and stuff like that. People have seen it. People think it's fine. But that's what she thinks people are sitting around talking about all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, she needs to just stop because yes. she's not relatable enough for the, any hey, of this I to ever work. I keep going. You go. Just go. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. I hope she runs again. You know, uh, we got to move on. But I love this quote. She was so talking does she. <laughs> <laughs> She went to Chipotle and she was talking about what happened at Chipotle and she says sometimes a burrito bowl is just a burrito bowl. And that's playing on the Sigmund Freud classic line on uh, phallic imagery. Something is, is sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. I don't think she realized what that meant and what kind of imagery that puts into your head. You don't want to put Clinton and cigars in the same sentence. But I don't think she made the connection, but some reason I did.